Astra Avisosk. We meet again, you two. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Uh, wait. Say what now? And if possible, Please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. Mm-hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Uh, Paimon's gotta ask. Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just... <laughs> was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah! So it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said, Ad Astra Adasosk? So it's been you this whole time? Uh, are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long... It was another dream about the sub Festival. Except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace. And everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the sub Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no! We aren't pitying you! That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the sub Festival? So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the Sage's activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry adventurers! We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? 
Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. I've already tried that. But all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. No way, that's too risky! You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Tamaru! We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Hmm... Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the Sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm... That does sound like it could work. Oh! Before coming back, we met someone named Al Haytham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the Academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now! Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the Subzero's festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sataria has always stood out from the crowd. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the Academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the Sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. From the sound of it, Sataria's just hung up on the research opportunities here. But 
She doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Vitaria will take a day off from the Academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. Satarya's favorite fortune telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding her future. Can we get a fortune reading for her? Hmm... <laughs> of course, of course. In that case... <laughs> uh -huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Health prospects. No problem at all. Oh. <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? Many, many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Harut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Harut and Marut on your next visit, Perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. 
It belongs to a king. His father helped Satari a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Ah, dear customers! Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! Hmm... So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samira's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, that's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Leeway Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study but failed to make it into the Academia due to my lack of talent. But, I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the Academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning! Amazing! Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Guess that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. So, was that everybody? Mm-hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember you mentioned that the Eremites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of King Deshret. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, Paimon gets 
it now? You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland. Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages. Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, King Dashrit is long gone. And Sitaria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of King Dashrit's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply they've already converted to the faith of King Deshret, and then convey our made-up will of King Deshret. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. So you're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. That is pretty convenient. But why does she have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. Uh, if it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. All right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. about the well-being of my retinue during my impromptu absence. I'm sure the good people of the Adventurer's Guild are absolutely fine, main Fräulein. to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Uh, Paimon's starting to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started.
That's right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <sighs> okay, then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. <laughs> Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Hmm, are you sure? Those aren't ringing a bell for some reason. Ah, well, actually they have many names. Which names I use depends on my mood. Huh, I see. I imagine that must be hard for the kitties, too. Ahem. So, which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the Divine Voice of Wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Well... Um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Um... The gods are asking. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Why haven't I gone... home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now, instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And, if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Considerate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all, King Deshret. G King Deshret? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Uh huh. Wait a second. King Deshret passed away a long time ago. Even though news of King Deshret's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the academia. How can King Deshret still exist in real life? What insolence! I am King Deshret's most loyal believer! Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! Oh! She just ran off in a hurry! She looked pretty upset, too. Well done. Sataria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her? That must have shaken her to the core. Aww, Nahida. It seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haribata theories. In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Is that a king's now? Right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away!
It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Gardening? But don't you hate everything to do with plants? I still remember getting mad at you for secretly throwing away the bonsai that I gave you as a present. Um, well, uh, you see, a friend told me that the secret to self-improvement is to work on things you're not so good at. <sighs> Fair enough. I didn't think that was something you would consider. Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Oh, that's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Let him know that recently, faith in King Deshret has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those King Deshret believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia, or King Deshret? Uh... I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert, yet you chose to betray King Deshret. And now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akeem, you don't mean... you've also become a believer of King Deshret? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. So, Shishan, have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Oh, right. Speaking of strange things... I celebrated the Subzerus Festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Shishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to King Deshret as well! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? King Deshred! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Sataria, 
Nothing is impossible. Y you know my name? King Deshret is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. You must face the truth, Sitaria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of King Deshret, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of King Deshret. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore or get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of King Deshret? Or are you the god himself? That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? <clears throat> How much do you know about the Sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city, and even the sages are still quite wary of him. To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. Alright, I trust you. So, uh... If I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro Archon... That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. She's the one who deserves all the praise. Well... Now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, 
All we can do is pray for Satarius' mission to go off without a hitch. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of wisdom and guardian of the scholars? Mm -hmm. No, no. The truth is the true guardian of scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild. Catherine, right? That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. Shh! We're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Yep, Paimon's right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep! Exactly! Just what Paimon was thinking! Hmm... Anyway, enough about that! Let's just make sure to be on our guard! Off? What do you feel is off? It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. You're not getting paranoid, are you? No, I think she's right. It really is a lot quieter than usual. If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not sure if this is the case for the entire city, though. Huh. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. I also can't quite figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. There really aren't many people out right now. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the Academia, and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. The triumphant hero returns at last. And to a rather spectacular welcome, even if I do say so myself. You're the outcast. 
outcast, expelled from the academia. Indeed I am. Although these days they tend to call me the Doctor. <laughs> if you're looking for your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. <sighs> the people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. No! What should we do? These are all just regular people! Leave now. You need to get out of here. But that guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru! You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be... the God of Wisdom. Catch your breath first. Uh, is the Hida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. Hymon wasn't counting on running into a new harbinger here, let alone such a high ranking one. That guy was number two. So scary. Mm, he called himself the Doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. And that even the Sages are wary of him. Yep, sounds like she must have been talking about the Doctor. Yeah, now that the Doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the Academia. They're in cahoots with the Fatui! But what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city. But we can't just keep waiting around. Uh, you mean... Oh, right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project. Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville.
here. You even want this? Following me. Hold it right there. A blonde haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. <laughs> Are you mercenaries from the Corps of Thirty? Did you come here to arrest us? Corps of Thirty? We're nothing like those government lapdogs who don't even get scraps for their work. 
We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? An Outcast from the Academia? But why wouldn't the Doctor just send the Fatui after us? Still wasting time on idle chit-chat. We'll shut you up soon enough. Get them! Uh, you're up, Traveler! Following order. New punching. You dare to gaze upon me? Oz, reveal thyself! No rest for the wicked. Swarm Fury. Quit following me. By royal Behold! Ah, it isn't over yet! Here comes the imprisonment! Ha! Get them! <sighs> that was pretty rough. Is that what elite mercenaries are like? Yeah, looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? Uh, going up against smart people is tough. Anyway, let's keep going. doing back here? Kalei! It's nice to see you again! Are you doing all right? I... <sighs> to be honest, I'm not doing too well. My Elazar has been progressing at a faster rate lately. I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him. Oh, Master Tainari? You just left the Avidia Forest a little while ago. He was headed to Party's DI. Huh? He left? But isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? He even turned down the Sage's invitation. I thought it was weird too. Master Tainari always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. No, I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. 
He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. <sighs> to leave in such a hurry? I guess he had something urgent to take care of. Hmm. Master Tainari originally studied in the Amorta Darshan of the Academia, and part of the eye is something like the Amorta's research base. Many rare shrubs and grasses have been planted there for research. I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Pardis the Eye. A research base, huh? Gotta wonder what kind of research Tainari just decided to work on all of a sudden. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, so let's go look for him at Pardis the Eye. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you run into Master Tainari, Please send him my regards. Got it. Will do. See you later, Kale. The show begins. Protect us.
You even want this? has brought me hither. to be wary of me right now. After all, the doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Hmm. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. Huh? But... I wasn't trying to win your trust or anything. All I wanted was to clarify my point. Well, we understand that point now. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people alright? When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. Whew. What a relief. The doctor sure pulled out some hidden cards, but good thing we had Nahida with us. I wouldn't be relieved just yet. I gave away my true identity when I restored everyone's minds, which means we've lost another one of our trump cards. Also, the doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then... How do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. Ugh, it feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. Plus, the Doctor's combat ability alone is apparently enough to make him worthy of being number two of the Fatui. We shouldn't give up hope just yet. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party DI? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy, so I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. 
You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. Pleasant surprise! It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh... What's it called? Satyavada life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Hapasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... <gasps> You're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno Life? <laughs> what do you think? My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. <sighs> you did it? Congratulations! It's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last! When my consciousness made contact with the gods... Ah, oh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was! That sounds incredible! Oh, alright. Uh, actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promise to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the Divine. You... you can do that? I've never heard of anything like that, but... if you want to give it a try... I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Uh, we're using that incense again? All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Okay. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god. My creator. My mother. Valuing strength above all. She saw no worth in me, and I was discarded. The second was a human. My family. My friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one 
exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality? He broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounce the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, a blank slate, and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> Fear, the pain will be brief. Your era is coming to an end. What was that? Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. But how is he connected to the Divine Consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic God! Such a noble will! Such sublime emotion! Alas, shame! If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart! Oh, great and merciful God! Please grant me forgiveness and salvation! Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no Puripurna life, but rather... Ah! You! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Apeja? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait... Have I... Already lost my mind? Oh, 
The Traveler's back? Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. After that, Tainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness, so I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <gasps> oh no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Surasthana for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Oh, that makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing! She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from the alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think Nahida was telling us to go find help in the desert? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Surasthana, correct? Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is... the Dendro Archon? Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's alright. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, <laughs> safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side. So, I trust you. Thank you, Tainari. Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that. While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that the project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansol. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? Hmm. Hmm. So that's what happened. That explains why Hapasia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia Forest because of Hapasia? I did. I noticed Hapasia's mental anomalies. But since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardis D.I. and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hapasia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god, the Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, 
I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then, what is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermensoul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the Sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Papasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, start by heading for Caravan Rebot. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the Spirit of Wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then! <laughs> <laughs>